Again, just like last time, we're going to determine the period of each function and we're going to graph it. We're looking at, we're going from left to right, the second letter you would run into. So we used A for the first letter, B is the next letter. This will be all your horizontal stretches and compressions. And does it make sense if you stretch something or compress something horizontally that that's going to affect its period? Because normally the period was 2 pi for sine and cos. And now when you stretch it, the period could be bigger. Or if you compress it, the period could be smaller. Okay? In this one particular, we're also going to look at the tan graph. For the most part, we don't graph as many tan graphs and the transformations we do mainly with sine and cos, but for the period we do have some questions with tan as well. Now, this is the first time that we have a formula that's not on your formula sheet that's really helpful to know. There's actually two formulas. There's a formula for sine and cosine that your period, which I'll use the letter P, is equal to 2 pi over whatever the b value is. Now this should make sense because when in example A, if I have cos 6x, does it make sense that you would multiply your x values by 1 sixth? Okay, multiplying by 1 sixth is the same as dividing by 6. Now if your period was originally 2 pi, Multiplying by 1, 6 or dividing by 6 would ha take that 2 pi and divide it by 6. And that's all this formula is saying, is divide by whatever number b is. So in our first example, the period would equal 2 pi over 6. Because it was 2 pi, and now you have to divide it by 6. Of course, you could reduce that to pi over 3 but I actually like to leave it as 2 pi over 6 because it shows your original period has been divided by 6. The second one, for tan, okay? Your period for tan is normally pi, but now you would be dividing that by b. Now, right now, this is a complex fraction. You'd have to simplify it. Remember that dividing by a fraction is same as multiplying by a reciprocal. So that would be equal, my top fraction is pi over 1, multiplying by the reciprocal 3 over 2 would give me a period of 3 pi over 2. And finally, for this last one, you could write x over 7 as 1 7th x, so the b value would be 1 7. Again, if you use the formula, your period would equal 2 pi divided by 1 7, which when you multiply by the reciprocal, would be 14 pi. So we're going to use these formulas, and you may want to memorize them. Or if you'd like to, you can still use the basic idea of your horizontal transformation. This one, what's going to happen? Your everything, your x values get multiplied by 1 sixth. So if your period was 2 pi and you multiply it by 1 sixth, you get 2 pi over 6. If you have 2 thirds, you're multiplying your x values by, you will just write it, x by 1 sixth for the first one, x by 3 halves. 
And in some ways, this is even easier than using the formula. If your period was pi, and you're multiplying by 3 halves, what's going to happen? Your period's going to be 3 pi over 2. And finally, this one also might be easier anytime you have fractions. If you have a 1 7th, the reciprocal of 1 7th would be 7. So you're multiplying your x values by 7. If your period was 2 pi, does it make sense that now it's 14 pi? So for graphing these, we're going to graph A and C first because they're very similar. And then we're going to look at the tan graph last. So for graph of A, when we're graphing things, okay. normally last time I started with a period of 2 pi, but now my period is pi over 3. So I'm going to mark that as the first thing I put down, pi over 3. If you cut pi over 3 in half, half of pi over 3 is pi over 6. And if I cut pi over 6 in half, which is the same as multiplying by half, I get pi over 12. One thing I do for the third one is since I know this is 1 pi over 12, this will be 2 pi over 12, this will be 3 pi over 12 as a way of counting. And if you want to, you can leave that like that. If you wanted to simplify that to pi over 4, that would be fine. But that's sort of the process for how I figure out what goes along my axes there. Nothing changed in the amplitude of this one. In fact, can you imagine in front of each of these a number 1? even though it's not written. So that means our A value is 1. So it's going to go up to 1 and down to negative 1. Our first graph is a coast graph. A coast graph starts at a maximum, then goes to the center line, down to the minimum, back to the center line, and back to the maximum. And there we've got an accurate graph of the first one. For part C, now our period is 14 pi. So that is what I'm going to mark first on my axis. Half of 14 is 7 pi. Half of 7. And it's okay to go to decimals here if you want to. It would be 3.5 pi. 3.5 plus 3.5 is 7 plus 3.5 again would be 10.5 pi. Again, we have a maximum of 1, a minimum of negative 1. This is a sine graph. Sine graph starts on the center line going up, back to the center line then to the minimum and back to the center line. Your sine graph needs to be a smooth curve. If you play connect the dots with straight lines like that, you lose a half a mark on your final exam. You have to make it as flowing a curve as possible, rounded at the tops. So those are the graphs of sine and cos. Again, you start with the period along the bottom and then graph them. For the graph of tan, it is easier to use our strategies from chapter 3, where we actually multiply things by the x values, the horizontal transformation, the horizontal stretch. We know that our original tan graph, our parent graph, has asymptotes at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. If you wanted to draw one more, the next one is at 3 pi over 2. And that our tan graph looks like this, sort of like an x cubed graph. 
over and over again. What's going to happen in this graph? If we go back up, we said that you're multiplying your x values by 3 over 2. And all that we're going to change when graphing the tan is we're going to look at our asymptotes. What's going to happen to our first asymptote, which was pi over 2? If I start with pi over 2 and I multiply it by 3 over 2, I'm going to get 3 pi over 4. And so my first asymptote that I'm going to draw here, I'm going to label at 3 pi over 4. This asymptote on this side will be at negative 3 pi over 4. If we took our second asymptote, which was 3 pi over 2, and multiplied it by 3 over 2, we would get 9 pi over 4. So we could label another one if we liked. Yeah. Often they'll say for at least one period. So if they said for at least one period, this would be enough. Sometimes they'll say graph between 0 and 2 pi. So you would have to go beyond that because this goes from 3 pi over 4. It's not bad if you do more than they ask for. But so usually they'll say graph at least one period. And then if you've got arrows on the end, it implies that it would continue that way. So there's the graph of the tan after the period's been changed. Because now, right, the distance between here and here, which is your period, is equal to 3 pi over 2. All right, the questions you can do after this one, finish up number three is 3C and D.